Welcome to St. Malachy's, the Actors' Chapel for the Solemnity of All Saints. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. 
He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure.
Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, as we take time to keep holy this day of obligation, All Saints Day, we reflect on the Lord's gift to us in this teaching, the way that leads to blessedness, the way that leads to him. And we ask of ourselves, what is it that we can learn from those who have made the journey before us, as well as those who are making the journey with us, in terms of preparing, being ready for that kingdom that is already and not yet, being ready to be at one with God. What is our pathway? our route that leads ultimately to God. For those who are poor in spirit, but place their trust in God, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For those who have known the heartbreak of mourning, a loss, they will not comfort. For those who are meek, do not put themselves first, they will inherit, indeed, the land what they need in order to survive in this life and to thrive in this life. For those who are merciful, it shall be shown back to them. For those who are clean of heart and those who make peace, they'll know God, will be children of God. All of those are things that are worth aspiring to, worth praying about and asking the saints to intercede for us. But ultimately, blessed are we who are insulted and persecuted and have every kind of evil uttered falsely against us because of what we believe. We're really living the truth in those moments. We're standing up for what we believe in. We're living a life consistent with the values that we believe are those that are given from God. We're making the sacrifices of our own comfort, our own need for recognition or esteem. We're letting go of the things of this world, of this life, that we might embrace more fully what God has always promised. He went up on the mountain, and when he was there, the disciples came to him. They had to go higher, they had to go up. And so in many ways, it's that for us as well. We need to go up in the life that we live, in what it is that we believe, what we profess. And sometimes that going upward means that we leave a lot of things down that really weren't getting us there in the first place that really just aren't that important. 
but comfort for those who mourn, mercy for those in need of it, a clean heart, being peacemakers. A lot of these things will gain ridicule, not praise from the world. But you see, it's false. And when it's uttered falsely because of the belief that we hold, indeed, we should rejoice and be glad, for we prepared for a reward that we never really set out to claim in any easy way, but that we've come to appreciate as the only way, Christ's way. Let us profess the faith that unites us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God lovingly provides the bread of life and cup of salvation for all who seek him. We turn to him in prayer, with our prayers for the church and for the world. For missionaries, may the Lord bless them with generosity and boldness in sharing the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the heads of government throughout the world, May God's gracious mercy be upon them and those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are troubled in spirit, may they receive hope and healing through the grace of God and the efforts of their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, may the Lord bless our relationships and grant us purity of heart and mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the light of faith, may they share in the resurrection of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For all special petitions brought before the altar. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you invite us to the fullness of life through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus. We offer these his prayers in his name who lives and reigns forever and ever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into the passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saints Malachi and Genesius, Cecilia and Vitus, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, grant we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and your loved ones forever and ever. The Mass has ended. Go in peace.